Hey, I'm Matt from MasterSketchup.com, and in this video, I wanna tell you about the Oculus Quest 2, and more broadly, how virtual reality can benefit you as an architect or designer. So from viewing your model in VR to having remote VR meetings inside of your model to all of the fun stuff that you can do with the Oculus Quest 2. So this will sort of be like a review video of the Oculus Quest 2 itself if you're already familiar with VR and are considering buying it. But the main focus of this video will be to show you everything that virtual reality can offer you as a professional designer or engineer. All right, so first of all, I've been researching and testing virtual reality solutions for several years now. I've owned all sorts of headsets. I've got this simple lens attachment that slips over your cell phone. I've got more advanced uh, cell phone headset called the Gear VR that your phone clips into. I have an HTC Vive that needs to you know, be tethered to my computer and it has two external sensors that need to be mounted to the walls for tracking. And I've had the Samsung Odyssey tethered headset and the original Oculus Quest as well as the Oculus Quest 2. And I have to say, after using the Quest 2 for several weeks now, actually I've had it for a couple months I believe, I have to say that this is really the first time that I've felt like we've got a product on the market that makes all of the right compromises in order to make VR affordable, easy to use, comfortable, and convenient. So let's talk about the headset for a little bit and then we'll take a look at some of the things that you can do with it to interact with your 3D models. And then we'll take a look at some of the uh, additional fun things that you can do with VR in general. So the Oculus Quest 2 is a completely wireless, standalone virtual reality headset. Now, unlike something like the HTC Vive that needs to be tethered to a computer and has two external sensors for tracking, the Quest 2 uses four built-in cameras to track your environment in order to be able to track full six degrees of movement while you're in VR. Now, some simple VR headsets aren't able to track position. They can only track the direction your head is pointing. So if you're, let's say you're inside of a virtual room and you take a step to the left, in the real world, well, in the virtual room, the whole room is gonna be locked relative to your head position. Um, and that can really be disorienting. So that's called three degrees of freedom. Um, six degrees of freedom is when everything, your position, your orientation, everything is tracked. So when you when you move left or right or forward or back or duck, um, that's all replicated in the, the virtual space as well. So this day and age, I wouldn't recommend getting any virtual reality headset that doesn't have this feature. The Quest 2 offers full positional tracking with no external sensors, no computer required, no cell phone required. The battery, displays, and processor are all built right into the headset. So you just put it on and you're in VR. Now it has built-in speakers that direct sound right into your ear while allowing you to still hear your surroundings in the real world. It is really cool because you know if you do have someone else in the room and they say something to you, you're not completely blocked out. You can hear and talk to them uh, really easily. So it works great because you're not fumbling around with headphones or earbuds. Um, and so it's really easy to take the headset on or off. And this is important, not only for your own convenience, but for the convenience of other people that you might be sharing your headset with, um, whether you know it's a client or someone else on your team. Um, but basically anyone who's not too comfortable or familiar with the headset will be able to more easily use it. Now you can adjust the volume using the rocker on the bottom of the headset. And if you want some privacy or better sound quality, there is a headphone jack on the side to plug in your own headphones. Now, when you put the headset on, it'll guide you through a first time tutorial, but if you're in a new environment, like a new room, um, it's gonna prompt you to set up the Guardian, which is 
the kind of safety device that defines a clear physical space for you to safely move around in while in VR. Now it can remember several locations. So for example, once you set it up in your office once, um, you shouldn't have to do it again. It's gonna remember that location. So you can just put the headset on next time you're in your office and it'll, it'll set up the Guardian automatically. Now, another cool feature with the Quest is the pass-through mode. So that's where it stitches together the feed from the cameras um, so you can see your physical surroundings. And you can actually activate this mode at any time while you're wearing the headset by just double tapping the side of the headset. So that's really convenient if you're in an app and you know someone, someone calls out to you, you can just double tap on the headset, look over, and when you're done, you just double tap it again to jump back into the app right where you left off. And then once you have your Guardian set up, this is the dashboard you'll see. So the Oculus Quest you know, has its own operating system and you can browse and purchase apps in the store and then launch them from your library. Um, you interact with things in VR using the included controllers, which you get two of, and these are also uh, fully tracked in VR as well. So each controller has a joystick um, that goes up, down, left, right. It's also a button that you can click. There's a, an A, B uh, button on the right controller and an X, Y button on the left controller. And then there are two menu uh, buttons as well. And then on the front, you have a trigger button and then a grip button on the side. So each controller is powered by a single AA battery. And, you know, compared to the, the original Quest controller, it's actually quite a bit bigger. Um, so there's this blank space off to the side for you to kind of rest your thumb, whereas the original Quest controller didn't really have like a neutral position for your thumb. Um, and the battery life has improved significantly with the newer Quest controller due to how they've improved some of the tracking. So I, I actually haven't had to replace the batteries at all yet with my new, uh, with, uh, with the Quest 2, so that's awesome. But the Quest also has hand tracking where you don't even need a controller. Um, now, not a lot of apps are supporting this yet, but basically the whole dashboard and kind of operating system, you can use your hands to interact. Uh, with the the different commands, but you know keep in mind controllers do offer a bit more interaction because of all the different buttons that it has. So if you've never used VR before, it's important to know that everything is stereoscopic or 3D. Um, so it has two lenses and the image being shown to each lens is slightly offset, which allows you to have depth perception. Kind of like if you've ever seen a 3D movie, but this is just a whole lot better because you're completely immersed. Um, you know, you can look all around you because your virtual environment is all around you. But one of the challenges with VR headsets is that um, because the display is so close to the eyes and the lenses magnify that display even further, um, the older headsets had issues where the pixels were so magnified that you could literally see the individual pixels and the space between the pixels. And it kind of made it look like you were looking through a screen door. It's actually called the screen door effect. But personally, uh, the the optical quality and display quality on the Oculus 2 um, objectively is a lot better than the first one. And personally, I don't even notice any screen door effect. Now, you do notice I have these. Um, so my, my eyesight isn't perfect and, and maybe that's part of um, how I'm not able to discern any screen door effect, but um, it's, it's a huge improvement. I really love the quality of the, the visuals of the Oculus Quest 2. All right, so why do you need a VR headset? Well, first of all, you can view and interact with your SketchUp model in VR using one of several apps. Now, my personal favorite is VR Sketch. Now, they're not sponsoring this. Um, actually, nothing here is sponsored. This is all my own opinion. But VR Sketch, out of all of the SketchUp apps that I've tried, is my absolute favorite. So, um, in my opinion, it's the best executed and truly 
integrated um, VR extension for SketchUp. And honestly, much better than even the official SketchUp VR app. But it, you know, instead of diving into the intricacies of that, I wanna just give you a general overview. With VR Sketch, you can have a live link to the model that you have open on your computer, which means any changes that are made in SketchUp get reflected live in the headset. And what's even more impressive is that most of the SketchUp tools, all the modeling tools, have been ported over to VR Sketch. So you can actually 3D model, um, you can draw, you can move, and basically pretty much everything you can do in SketchUp, you can do inside VR. Um, and everything you do to the VR model gets updated to the SketchUp model on the computer in real time. So VR Sketch has full Quest support, so you can actually use VR Sketch wirelessly, although um, the app isn't officially supported on the Oculus Quest Store, so you have to just jump through a few hoops um, to, to get it installed using a program called SideQuest. But I wanna mention every single one of the SketchUp apps that I mentioned in this video that are um, Quest compatible have to go through the same process. So it's not something specific with VR Sketch. I'm not exactly sure why, why that's the case, why they're not on the official store or not. It's not really a big deal because once you set it up once, it's good to go and then you just open the app uh, on your headset anytime you wanna jump into it. Now, the official SketchUp VR app does technically support the Quest, but only through the Oculus Link feature, which allows you to use the Oculus Quest like a tethered headset by using a special USB cable. So the official SketchUp VR app doesn't have wireless Quest support, and there's not even a live link to your SketchUp model. So you have to save the model and then like open it inside the headset and you have to like log in separately. It's really a pain. But as a side note, the Oculus Link feature allows you to run VR apps from your computer, including from Steam VR, which is the most popular VR library. So that makes the Quest a very versatile headset and eliminates one of the biggest drawbacks to having a standalone headset. So you basically get the best of both worlds. You have the convenience and portability of a wireless standalone headset while also being able to tap into your uh, graphics card processing power and the big library on Steam VR uh, to run VR apps and games and programs uh, tethered to your headset. Now, VR Sketch also has a collaboration feature which lets you upload your model to the cloud and explore it in VR with other VR Sketch users remotely. But I think VR Sketch is kind of more geared towards designers who are actively modeling in SketchUp and wanna explore their model in VR um, in order to brainstorm and get you know a feel for the space. Um, so if you're looking for a VR solution that allows you to share your models with a team or clients um, that maybe doesn't have a ton of features that might confuse people who aren't too familiar with it, I'd recommend some other uh, services to check out as well. So for example, there's The Wild, there's Sentio VR, and Iris VR. And there are other apps that work with the Quest using Oculus Link where the headset is tethered to the computer, like the official SketchUp VR app. Um, and Enscape actually has a pretty simple live VR extension that works really well right inside of SketchUp. And Cubity has a VR app that's included with their suite as well that works with Oculus Link. So aside from being able to view your model in VR, you can also do some pretty cool stuff like use this app called Immersed to create a virtual office connected to your computer with giant virtual screens all around you. And even it has a keyboard overlay feature that allows you to match your virtual keyboard with your actual physical keyboard in real life and basically create an office wherever you are. And of course, there are a ton of games on the Quest. My personal favorites are Beat Saber, Super hot. Super. 
keep talking and no one explodes. And I expect you to die. And with Oculus Link, I also enjoy a flight simulator called X-Plane. And hopefully the new flight simulator, Microsoft Flight Simulator, um, will be VR compatible pretty soon. Um, but I don't think it is quite yet. But the Quest is also great for kicking back, watching Netflix, Prime Video, and even YouTube. And you know, the cool thing is, if you click the subscribe button, you'll be able to see my videos right in your feed in VR without having to search for them. All right, now for a couple of drawbacks. So first of all, the consumer version of Oculus Quest requires you to have a Facebook account. So Facebook actually owns Oculus, so obviously they're, you know, collecting data on Quest users in order to help their advertising business. So for a lot of people, that raises a lot of privacy concerns. Um, on the other hand, the consumer version of the Quest actually isn't licensed for commercial use. So if you are using it in your business, you're supposed to buy the commercial version of the headset which costs $799 compared to the $399 price tag for the 256 gigabyte consumer version. So it's literally double the price. And there's even a more affordable consumer version at $299 that has 64 gigabytes of storage. Now there's actually nothing different about the physical headset between the commercial version and the consumer version, except that you know, it has different licensing, it has different software, and it doesn't have access to any of the com consumer apps on the Oculus Store. But there are several other features that are helpful for managing several headsets at once. Um, so if you'd like to buy the commercial uh, version of the Oculus Quest 2, you have to reach out to a representative directly, and I'll probably find that link and put that in the description for you. But otherwise, if you'd like to buy the consumer version, I'll also have links in the description below. So overall, I really love this headset for its optical quality, convenience, and its ability to be used as a tethered headset. And out of all of the headsets I own, it is, it's the one I grab. When I, when I wanna go into VR, I grab my Quest 2. So again, if you'd like to check it out on Amazon, I have some links in the description below. Oh, and by the way, make sure you don't accidentally buy the Oculus Go. That's like an older version. It's not six degrees of freedom, but it's confusing because they're both white and they look kind of similar. So you definitely don't wanna make that mistake. Make sure you buy the Quest 2. Um, so that's gonna do it for this video, kind of a rough overview of VR and the Oculus Quest 2. Thanks for watching. Don't forget there's links in the description below. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.